Nancy and Grace, Inside Edition, Pat and Teller's Bullshit, Brain Games, and Adam Ruins Everything. His featured segment is a spirit medium on the pilot episode of Showtime's Pat and Teller's Bullshit series entitled Speaking with the Dead and helped secure an Emmy nomination for that episode in 2002. His book, Psychic Blues, shatters the crystal ball myth of a spiritually enlightened psychic business and instead builds the unwary out of millions of dollars every year. He will be speaking on his contention that cold reading and other nefarious methods used by so-called psychics and mediums should no longer be simply viewed as entertainment, but have now become survival skills. Thank you. Pump this group up. This is the last round, so I know you're all drooping slightly, but we planned it this way so that I can probe your minds and you're softened up now. There's so much information that you've had that you're, you know, any more that I put on top of it is going to be uh, a, a numbing experience. So I would like to start by just doing a little demo of what a mentalist does, and then I will connect it to my contentions about what is going on in the psychic world. Um, would, would, would you mind helping? Um, sure. Just, just wait there. I'm only going to use your mind. Good luck. How many people know what cold reading is, first of all? Good. I don't have to go over that. How many people know who, what hot reading is? Not as many. Okay, well, we'll talk about that. So, your name is? Brenda. Ah, oh, that's correct. Very good. So, she's doing really good. You see how this works? Brenda, um, uh, I, I feel like the, one of the first impressions I get about you is that you have a creative side to your nature. You, you can visualize things. Is that true? Okay. And, and before we go any further, we, we did not plan anything. We have no idea. That should be perfect. Very good. That's, that's good. So we're going to try a little visualization technique, okay? And, uh, and I like to choose people who can do that because a lot of us, when we build something or we construct something, we see pictures of it first. Uh, we don't think of words, we see pictures. And that's how psychics work. They see an image, they see a picture of something. So uh, I, I read Esquire magazine because I, I really like to stay up on Trump, you know, and know what's going on with fashion and all of that. A magazine like Esquire is really good to use as a sample, set of samples, because your average edition, there is a ton of photographs, okay? There is shoes, there is uh, there's shoes, there's cars, there's sports things, there's an elephant, there's fragrance. I mean, it's chock full of images from this cover to this cover. So I'm going to ask Brenda to come up and stand right here. Okay. And... Uh, so are you right or left-handed? Right. Okay, I'm going to ask you to use your left hand because the left hand is traditionally, it carries more psychic energy than the right. Okay. You may have heard that. It's closer to the heart. It gets more circulation. Oh, wow. Wow. That's wow. That's that's true. I, I, I heard this on Dr. <laughs> Phil, so I know it's... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, 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 <coughs> so what you're going to do is you're going to cradle it in your left hand like this, a little okay. bit like this, not completely flat, okay. because what you're going to do with your right fingers and stand, stand over a little more here by the light. This is perfect because the light is right here. And I'm going to stand over here. So what you're going to do, I'm going to say now. And you're going to take your fingers from your right hand and you're just going to ripple sort of through here like this. And then wherever you want, you're going to quickly open up the magazine, look at whatever the picture is on the right hand side. Hopefully there will be a picture. And then you're going to close it. Actually, let's do this. I'm going to take these notes. You're going to open it up wherever you want, okay. and then you're going to put this in there and then close it up. Okay. okay? This way I'll have laboratory conditions. Okay. <laughs> so this is your marker. And are you clear on what to do? I think so. It's pretty simple. Okay, so hold that in your left hand. Okay. And then you're just, there you go. And then with these fingers, when I say now, and I'm going to turn over here and look at this brick wall, make sure there's no mirrors or reflections anywhere. You're going to quickly open it up, and by the way, if we get a page that has a lot of words, we'll have to have to do it again because I want a solid picture. That's the only way I'll be able to do this. Are you ready? <laughs> yes. One, two, three, go. Okay. Got something? Uh-huh. Drop that bookmark in there and then close it up. Okay. All right, and then you can, uh, yeah, set that down. All right, now, don't go anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 you have to fall the Well, the thought is fresh. I want you to stand right here. Okay, okay. now relax. Okay. 
imagine you know that you're surrounded by a white energy, like okay. that light. Okay. <laughs> All right. So I want you to focus on the picture. This doesn't always work. So it's, it's, First thing I get is a lot of uh, glass and metal. Maybe. Okay. No, maybe not a lot. Okay. All okay, right. All right. Uh, so I should answer. No, no, no. You did, I'm okay. just, these are just my impressions. They come to me slowly, like okay. like a, a, a photograph coming up slowly. Okay. And now I hear a sound. <laughs> did you look at a picture of a watch? Yeah. You did. Let's see. <laughs> yeah. really yeah. yeah. There it is. Woo! Burn him! 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 Burn and, and now I've got your attention, but everything else I'm going to try to explain to you and share with you is disillusioned. So, okay? I mean, I don't like to do that because it's my job is to create wonderment. That's what a magician or a mentalist does. However, there are those among us in our society today who have now taken that, taken a lot of these techniques and methods and are now using them against us, okay? <laughs> And uh, I don't want it to sound like a conspiracy theory, but I wrote a book that's called Psychic Blues, okay? And what I did is, as a magician, I grew up as a magician, and my grandfather was a magician, and when I was very young and I started to get bored with standard magic, which is the rope tricks, and you take the green handkerchief and you, it comes out red, you know, it's pretty to look at and it's clever, but there's no real reason for it to happen. But with a psychic or mental experiment, there's a reason for it that even if you're the biggest skeptic in the world, you still are a little more charmed by it, or your intellect is a little more excited by it, because it's that what if, you know? What if Uri Geller could bend a fork with his mind? That changed the whole landscape of magic when Geller came along, because he, it, well, we don't look at silverware the same way anymore. It was huge. And, and in my formative years as a magician mentalist, when he came along and these things started going on at uh, Stanford uh, Technical up in San Francisco, near San Francisco, it was earth shattering because scientists were getting fooled. And that's how I got into skepticism. Is I, I said, you know, there must be something, it, the, the, if something real is out there, it's not going to come from the, the believers because they already believe. It's going to come from the skeptics who are looking at this stuff with science in mind. And all magic is science, believe it or not. Not all, not all science is magic, but that's how it works. Okay, so the contention is with cold reading, I really believe that cold reading has now become a survival skill that we all need to understand in order to get through the next 10 or 15 years because we are now in a, a situation where <clears throat> lying has become an accepted business practice and you know who I'm talking about, okay? It's all around us every day. We are constantly being given challenges. Is it real? Is it not real? Is it fake news? Is it real news? That's the way it goes. That's the way that you manipulate. That's how a magician misdirects you. I show you something in this hand. Meanwhile, what's the other hand doing? Okay. Stealing my money. It's what? Stealing my money. Well, it's not even stealing your money. It's stealing your privacy and your information. Do I need to say Cambridge Analytica? I mean, in the last couple of weeks, we have seen how our information is being used against us. I don't even have to go through my notes anymore because I already, I already predicted this was going to happen because when I wrote my book, I started to see evidence where certain people who had a lot of money were trying to construct platforms to evolve the psychic paradigm from being simple tarot card readings where you sit across from somebody and they're reading you and they're, they're just wise people who know human nature to actually setting up platforms, and this is a true story, 
kind of diverging a little bit, but uh, a, a company called Bain, do you remember Bain Corporation? Capital. Yeah, yeah. Bain Capital. Yeah. They, uh, and this was right around the time that Mormon guy was getting involved in politics, and he was involved with Bain Capital. Romney? Uh, Romney, yeah. 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 Yeah, so, so after, I, after I had written the book, it had been out for a while, and people, I was, did a couple TV things, I get this phone call from Bain Capital. And I really didn't believe, they said, I, I, had, I had questions. They called me up, and a guy said, listen, I represent a couple of investors who have a lot of money, and they're interested in reconstructing a new psychic platform on the internet. And we wanted to know if you're interested in getting involved. And I said, well, tell me more about it before I say anything. So he said, what they're, what they're going to do is they're going to make it so it's, it's like Skype. Or before on the 900 lines, which I talk about in my book, you're on the telephone. You're just doing a general reading, right? But now what they wanted to do is make it so that somebody goes on online, Psych to talk to the psychic. Then they're connected to that psychic, okay? Once they're connected to that psychic, the person who's at home sees the psychic with their charts behind them and all their hoopla, you know, and, and the psychic is saying, yes, how, you know, uh, I, I'm, I'm going to answer your questions. In fact, I'm going to start telling you things. Meanwhile, because of the information interface, on the other end where the psychic is sitting in their home, their screen is a split screen. They can see the client on the right-hand side. On the left-hand side is all their information gathered from Facebook, Foursquare, including their financial information, which in America, it is legal because you're a business to look at your financial information. Like when you go to buy a car, they go through a credit. So, in other words, this psychic could sit there and just be kind of looking over and going, Oh, you spent a lot of money on shoes last month. How are your feet? I'm getting something about feet. But this guy's telling me this is what they're going to do. And he's like, and I'm like, that is totally unethical. He goes, well, I have some moral problems with that too, but I'm just representing the client, right? So they were testing me once again, and this has happened many times, to see if I wanted to be their consultant. And I said, I don't want anything to do with it because I smell what was coming. This, was, this has been like eight years ago. So where we are today is that hot readings, and this is what Susan and I are working on, uh, it, it's not even, <laughs> we've actually gone past that now, but hot readings are when the, a psychic or a medium who stands up in front of people and, and pretends to get messages from your dead ancestors, they get information beforehand like Peter Popoff. Yeah. Well, it's even worse than that. Well, Popoff was kind of the progenitor of this, but yeah. but now what it is, is uh, we, we gladly put our information up every day. We're happy to put our pictures of baby clothes up on Facebook, aren't we? And we forget <laughs> that many months ago we might have put a picture of a horse or in a, we're in a boat somewhere, or we're at Disneyland. We don't remember. I can't remember what I put up on Facebook unless I see the thing that says, here's your memory, you want to reshare again. So what happens is you, you buy a ticket to see Teresa Caputo. How many people know who she is? <laughs> Isn't that great? That's great. Teresa's the blonde Long Island medium with the huge oh, hair oh, and the fancy yes. shoes. Well, I did an inside edition with her where we were tasked with finding out whether she uses hot readings or not. And the producer of the show said, you have to get me incontrovertible evidence that this woman is doing that. Because I don't want anything else. I don't want hearsay. I don't want maybe. I've got to have, we've got to catch her. So we did catch her, but we couldn't, we still couldn't, it was hard to show it. Okay, for example, she did that very thing. She had an audience of maybe three or four hundred people. So you, you want to go see Teresa, so you use your credit card and you buy a ticket. And your seat number is generated with your name on it. So what she does is her minions, and it only takes one or two people to do this, picks out maybe 
five or six people in a group of 200, 300 people and does background checks. They go to your Facebook and all these different places and they, they create a profile just like Cambridge Analytica has done with all of your Facebook information and all of your Google information. They create what is called, and now I just heard the term about three days ago, and I, I don't like how it sounds because it sounds conspiratorial. It's called a shadow profile. Have you heard about this? The shadow profile is used for, it's called surveillance marketing, and that's to find out what you want to buy. Maybe you don't like organic food, maybe you like In-N-Out burgers or whatever it is. But what Teresa would do is make a, a profile. And I've done it. I love pre-show work because pre-show work is done before you arrive to the, the venue. And then you just walk on stage and you just, you act like, like I did with the magazine. So you can act as long as you want or as short as you want. So what we noticed with Teresa right away was that she had a film crew Here, that was, was holding a handheld camera and a microphone on a boom and a light. And what she would do is she would say, she would do, the people in the front row are usually people who have already had a reading or several readings with her in private. So she'll just go up to them and say, she'll just pick up where she left off at the last reading and start saying, you know, I'm, your grandmother's here with us and the person will start crying or whatever because she's already worked this person but the rest of the audience does not have any idea. So then we notice that the film crew would go over to a certain part of the audience and set everything up and then she'd go, I'm getting something from over here and go and follow the film crew which is like, are they the real psychics or is she the psychics? So she, then she'd go to that person and what she actually said is she said, you know, stand up and uh, getting, you know, you are from, you're visiting from out of town and yes, yes. And, and I just, I get a picture of, uh, I'm seeing some baby clothes and the woman said out loud, that's amazing. I just put pictures of baby clothes up on Facebook. <laughs> And I fight this to the reporter. Of you see, but you can't make a conclusive connection because she's because what psychics will do is they'll get out of that kind of liability by saying, "Oh, well, maybe she read her mind." See, they can't. I can't prove that Teresa used that kind of information. So, without going into the whole story, Susan and I did a successful sting where we combined Susan's ability to have this vast network of people on Facebook and we created fake Facebook pages that were that her people went to went to town with where they put up pictures of their puppies, uh, they made up stories, we hope you get in touch with your dead brother. She doesn't have a dead brother. She doesn't know anything about the puppies. It was all made to later connect with the, the become you, you tag and become friends with the medium, and then the medium, it, it's almost impossible for him to not not do this, and that's what we were hoping for. I mean, what we found in the last five years is that psychics are much lazier than we thought. They don't even, <laughs> they don't even care anymore, unless they are on the ascendant, which means if they are somebody who's just coming up in the psychic world and they need the hits because there's hits and misses, right? The misses get edited out, by the way, whenever you see Tyler Henry's show. They tape for three hours and the show's 30 minutes. So guess where all the misses went? On the editing room floor. So the real psychic or magician, in that case, is the editor. So okay. like a hedge fund. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. We won't tell you about the hedge funds that you need. Yeah. Of course not. So, so, so what we did is we created these and then we also to kind of double blind it we Susan and I went as husband and wife and we had our tissues does anybody have a tissue and of course we sat right right as close to the front as possible and I had a picture of my son who's very much alive around my neck because that's one of the things they do you know and we're just looking like all the rest of the bereaved people. And, uh, oh, the double blind. So the double blind was that certain things were put on the Facebook pages that we didn't know about. 
So the idea was that if the medium went to those things and said them, it would conclusively show that he went to the Facebook, or, or she went to the Facebook play page because we didn't even know about them. We were not given that information, and we could more or less prove it, right, mm -hmm. Susan? Yeah, we can prove it. Yeah, so, so sure enough, first he got these incredible hits, this guy. I won't mention his name because he's... He's done. He doesn't know. He doesn't know yet. He's not psychic. Done he is. <laughs> <laughs> so he was getting these incredible hits, and we were like, wow, this guy really is because he is very, very, very good because he was not getting any misses. I mean, he was honing in on people one after the other, and, and it, if you did not know, if you were a real bereaved person who did not know the techniques that he was using, he was like a god. I mean, you would have not applauded, you would have prayed, you would have just been like... And we were like, wow, he is really good. But then we started to notice things, like I noticed a lady sitting right adjacent to me was dabbing in her eyes, but she wasn't really crying. While he was giving her a reading, she was going like this, but she wasn't crying. And, you know, you can tell when somebody's really upset when they're acting. Not us, of course, because we're really good. <laughs> but, but I realized, and then he gave her a really dead-on reading. And the whole audience is just like, wow. Well, we found out later that was one of his students that he's training, right? So what he did is he jumped right, right into our reading and went right for the stuff that we, that we knew about. But the funny part was he started getting things that we didn't know about, that we couldn't know about unless you went to the Facebook page. And that put us in a kind of an uncomfortable situation. But we are activists. We don't give a shit. <laughs> we are going to just say yes, yes. And then he, then he started to say, who quit smoking? And I was like, uh... Yeah, you said it was your brother. Yeah, I said, and, and he was like, no, it wasn't your brother, it was her, her, her and, I, and I'm like, yes, yes, it must have been my brother. We were trying to keep up with his bullshit, because he was <laughs> feeding it back to it, and then he said, who's Buddy, he says to me, and I'm like, Buddy, 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 he goes, it's your dog, man, and I'm like, oh, yeah, Buddy, oh, of course, my dog. <laughs> so, anyway. He dug himself in, and the article, sh we're hoping it was supposed to be out by the end of March, which is today. <laughs> and, uh, but these reporters take a long time because he's really going to fry this guy big time. What he's going to do is he's going to show the technique we used to set up the sting. And we wanted this to be a template so that all of you, if you were so inclined, could go ahead and use this technique on your own. And it's really very satisfying to call these guys out. It really is. And that's why Susan and I, if we're anything, we're activists. Because we don't even like to come and talk. Because talk is just talk. It can help. But it's like, it's, it's, it's time though. what is it, Malcolm X? Hey, Malcolm, wherever you are, he said, it's time to stop singing and start <coughs> singing. Because it's just, I can't fight the big time deception. Because I'll get killed. Like, I grew up in the 60s, and you used to be able to crawl on Nixon's windshield and stuff like that. If I tried that today, I would be shot dead. I wouldn't even be able to get to the car. So, I mean, my political bent is completely gone now. All I want to do is start with the bottom feeders where I can make a difference. Because once you understand these techniques of deception, you realize that we are in the golden age of the con right now. You think that the spiritualist era at the turn of the century was big? Imagine what it's going to be like a hundred years from now when they look back on this era we're in right now, where our information, our most intimate stuff is being used and made into a product and being sold back to us. So, that's pretty much it. I, I, I can't make it any more plain than that. Let me just flip through my notes to see if I'm forgetting anything. Oh, I won't get into the... Uh, here's one of the big secrets in, in, in becoming a psychic. Make bold statements as if they're facts. That's it. That's all you have to do, and you can become famous. Just don't back down. Okay? And it's really easy to make bold statements as facts when you've researched somebody because their mouth will fall open and they'll be like, 
How, and one of my favorite phrases that I've heard hundreds of times, there's no way in the world he could have known that. And I always say, oh, yes, there is. Um, yeah, make quick paced judgments about people, places, and situations, and use another governmental term, which has become very popular, situational awareness. You all know what that is, right? No? Anybody not know what it is? Susan. You go into a room, you look where the exits are, you look around, who's the shadiest looking character? That's what psychics do. All this stuff that has now become, uh, become second nature to uh, interrogators, there's really not much difference between what an interrogator does and what a psychic does. It's just the intention of what they're doing. An interrogator needs to find out information to save lives. A psychic needs to find out information to make money. But, but there's very little difference uh, between that. Uh, and and uh, <coughs> I grasp for a moment. How much time do I have? Maybe uh, you know we're kind of open ended at this point. Yeah. Okay, all right. Well, I just don't want to bore you because there's so much that's going on. For example, we found out that you know waterboarding doesn't work. Remember, you know, it the torture doesn't work. It it gives false information and it doesn't work. So, and the real secret is, what they found out is, how do you get information? You become friends with that person. You make them feel comfortable. Hey, would you like a drink? Would you like a cigarette? Hey, let's sit down. How's your family? Guess what? What do you think happens when you go into the psychic storefront? Can I get you some tea? Are you comfortable? Here, have a pillow. Here, let's sit down. Oh, I hope, I hope everything... It's the same thing. It's, it's, they, they want to be friendly, they want you to feel comfortable, and, we, and that's, so what I'm saying is a lot of the methods that have been around for literally centuries are now starting to become, they're realizing, I mean, they play tough, like, we're going to keep up with this enhanced interrogation, but the real information is coming from the soft touch and some of the methods that are being, that have been used by mediums and psychics for, for Centuries um, and quacks. <laughs> and what? And quacks. Yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, I I can tell most mostly everything I need to know about somebody because I did this for a living, in order to learn the methods, before the person even sits down at the table, because what I'm looking for is I'm looking at their shoes, I'm looking at their jewelry, I'm looking at their way they're walking, I'm looking at their hairstyle, their makeup, all these things are immediately judged, and it is a judgment, but, and it is, it is a, a, a method of profiling. But guess what? That's, what? that's what happens. We do that every day, and we may not want to admit it, but it's like a, I use the example of a, a guy who works in a shoe store for 30 years, okay? When he sees a person come through the door, he doesn't rush over to, over to them usually and say, can I help you, what are you looking for? He looks at the person and he makes a pretty good judgment. Oh, here's the price range we're looking at. Here's what I'm going to be able to help this person with. And here's the whole section over here I'm not. So we don't call that psychic. We call it intuitiveness or training. So a mind can be trained. And that's, that's what really interests me is how we train ourselves to think. All right, so I'm pretty much at the end of this data mining, you know, and now it's called a pro predictive analytics. And when I was working as a psychic, one of the things I used to get every month is I got a magazine <clears throat> called American Demographics. And I wait to get that. It was so fascinating because what it was is it was all the commercial things that were going on and there'd be maps of the United States. <clears throat> and it would say something like, in the month of November, Nebraska sold the most shoes of any state in, in the United States. And then it would even show, like, highlight which cities were, you know, it was useless information to the average person. But let's say I got a phone call on my 900 line from Nebraska, I could say, I could make, I could throw something out and make a bold statement. You bought new shoes recently, didn't you? And, and a lot of times you'd get a hit. 
So the more the more homework I did, the more I became psychic. But it had nothing to do with anything supernatural. It was just doing your homework. So I'm I'm not I won't say I'm frightened by where we are. But, but, but basically, psychics are be, becoming superseded. They are just the they are the they're the bottom feeders. And and I want I want to share my information with people, but you know what? Something's got to give here because it, it, if you start to feel like you're, the tail is wagging the dog, it's not fortune telling anymore. It is manip gross manipulation. So I, I guess that's really what I want to uh, end with is, uh, you know, anybody can do this. It's just what your intention is. You know, it's a business. It's a business that is, uh, like I think when Psychic Friends Network, you all remember them, don't you? They made like $150 million in that first year. And that was profit, too. That was after they paid all the bills. The problem with them, and it's in my book, is they got too greedy. And they, they, they started to use methods that are described in there, which I found extremely unethical. And I said, you know, they really didn't have to do that, but they were greedy. And it ended up being, uh, that's how they, they went bankrupt finally. So, I brought some of my books if you're interested. And then I also, just for fun, I brought some of my more magical books. I mean, if you want to see what I do in the in my, <laughs> These are the notes when I go to like do a magic a convention or a magic uh, lecture. Uh, they're, they're tricks, because that's what my background is in. But my real challenge is to try and make the tricks not look like tricks. Because if it looks like a trick, you are not really providing the level of wonderment that, uh, say, for example, somebody like Uri Geller. Uri Geller does not admit that he does tricks. But I know him. <laughs> and Randy knows him too. And I have a high regard for him as a performer, but I have a very low regard for him as a human being because he, he's, he's a charlatan and he won't admit it. So you get into all sorts of things. If you, if you express yourself as a charlatan and you overdo that, guess what happens? They say he must be real. Look at him. He's denying all of these things. Like if I said, I don't want, I, you know, do not come to me for lotto numbers. I don't do exorcisms anymore. I don't want any, anybody to, to think that I have any sort of powers or anything. Pretty soon the audience is going, you know, so I don't do disclaimers, and I get in a lot of trouble with that with with, uh, with the skeptics because they believe that if you're doing a performance, you really need to tell the audience from the beginning that you uh, are just doing this as a big joke. But to me, I just I can't do that because I I assume that there's a certain level of education to the crowd I'm talking to, and I also try and inject a little. I don't take myself too seriously. I want them to be challenged and to think. And they won't think if I tell them everything I'm doing is fake. And then you come up to the other side of it. Even if I explain, like if I do something really astounding, and, and I've added out, <laughs> should I tell them the clown in the grave? Yeah, end on that. End on, on the clown in the on graveyard. That. Okay. My clown in the graveyard story, okay? This really happened, and this was one of those moments that a mentalist prays for. I won't say prays for, but you, you wish that this would happen more often. So, many years ago, I rented a movie. It was called The Iron Rose. Actually, I bought it. It's an Italian horror film. It's about this couple who decide to go off one night and, and have an evening in a graveyard. And there's one scene in the movie. You know that movie? <laughs> No, no, I'm just going like, oh, graveyard, it's romantic. Yeah, no, it's, it's Italian, what are you going to do? It was very romantic. So they go to the graveyard, and, they, and, and it's sundown, and they see this clown putting flowers on a grave. He's dressed like a clown, he's putting flowers on a grave. And I thought, that's an interesting scene. I'm going to use that some, someday. Because I have this endless font of useless trivia that comes in handy when you're doing psychic readings. Because you just say stuff and people connect it for you. Because they want you to be right. That's the sad. Mm -hmm. So, now we have the rule of large numbers. 
And you'll notice this if you ever go to see a really high-end psychic where they've got a room full of people. They will say, ah, oh, I'm, getting, I'm getting something in, in the heart area and it has to do with an automobile. And then they say, does that mean anything to anybody? <laughs> they don't go to this person and say, I'm getting something happening in an automobile with a heart. No, they make a broad statement and then <coughs> start to go up. And then they just pick the person who they feel like choosing and then they start course correcting with that person in what they say. And if they start to get like a nod like no, then they'll just go to the other person. That's called cold reading. So I'm at Dragon Con mm -hmm. in Atlanta, and it's a room of about 300 people, standing room only, and, I'm, and I did a lot of pre-show first, which means, <laughs> and in my pre-show, what I do is I just go to the line who's standing to go into the show, and I just go, so who would you like to get in touch with if you talk to a medium? And they go, oh, I'd like to get in touch with my dead cat, and I'm like, okay. <laughs> go to somebody else. They don't know who I am, and then when I'm on stage, I go, I am so sorry about your cat. And they're like, everyone goes, <gasps> <laughs> So this time I decided to use, I was just going to try this, the rule of large numbers. So I said to this group, I said, and this is after I had about six really good hits. I mean, they were, these people were, they did not know what was going on at all. They were really, and I, I remember I'm always prepared to end the show by explaining how I did it. Not what I did here today, <laughs> but what I do when I do a show like this is I get people in tears. I don't like to do that, but I have, because people who are so emotionally invested, they will break down. And then I explain what I did. Okay, so I said, I said, I am getting an impression of a clown in a graveyard. Does that mean anything to anybody? <laughs> Not expecting to get anything from that, but just throwing it out there because I was at the end of the evening. Shirley. And I was starting to... Shirley. Don't forget Shirley. Oh, yeah. And her, and her name is... Or there's something to do with Shirley. Something to do with the name Shirley. Okay. <laughs> so, again, I'm just making shit up and I'm just throwing it out there. And I was totally prepared to just go on with the next thing, you know. But a woman stands up. <laughs> she's like way in the middle of the crowd and she goes how did you know that and I'm like oh you know in the character I'm supposed to know that I'm like well this is a gift that I have you know and, and she says uh, well I you know there used to be a guy in my hometown and he he used to go around in his clown costume and put flowers on the graves and my name is Sharon, but he always called me Shirley. <laughs> now, you're giving me goosebumps. I know. I got him too. Now Mr. Magic is in the position where he's going to try to explain this to everybody, right? So, so I, I, I went ahead with everything, and I, and I tried to ignore it. So what I did is I just said, here's how I did pre-show. I asked this guy about his dog. What it was is the guy told me that his wife's dog had just died and she wasn't in line yet, right? Mm -hmm. So when I saw him and her, I said to her, I'm really sorry about your dog. And she was just like, I mean, you couldn't believe the expression on her face. Meanwhile, her husband's going. <laughs> <laughs> but this is what these people do. I mean, they do it from 9 to 5, 24-7, Year after year, they have no conscience. They're sociopaths. I am not. I have a little of that in my personality. <laughs> but that's because I'm a magician. So anyway, so I did the whole show, and then... Uh, she came over after. Yeah, I, I explained everything else, and I was like hoping that she would just go away. <laughs> she comes over to the stage. All right, you know. She, she said was she, very, was, she very, thought she was going to throw up when you goes, told her. When you said that, I thought I was going to throw up. And I'm like, you know, I wanted to get that on tape because that's the kind of thing you mix on a, on a sizzle reel, and it sells your show. <laughs> you, know, right? you see that on TV, and you go, God, that guy must be a god, you know. But it was just a fluke. You know, and I told her, I said, look, I say that in almost every show I do, which wasn't really true, but I'm trying to just get her to go away, you know. So what did she finally... She, she, she said, well, she said you, she was adamant that you went to her and told her that 
she was the one that had. She yeah, made it sound like it forgot, was. She forgot that it wasn't the. Because you made a general statement to 300 right people. She said that it was you went to. You told me that I knew about a clown in a graveyard right. and Shirley, and you told me that. And you tried to explain to her, no, I told the entire the room. Rule, the rule of large numbers. And you said, are the no, one that picked up. No, she would not. So my point in telling you the story is, even when you explain to people, it happens. It just happens. <laughs> because they want to make that connection. They don't want to go home and say, I saw a psychic that was didn't get anything right. So, you know, even after I explain it, then she's not going to forget that. She is scarred for life. Thanks, now, Mark. Is that a bad thing that I did? <laughs> because really, I'm explaining, but stuff just, just happens like that. Now, in the old days, when I first started writing this book, all the other psychics that I was working with, they would be like, oh, poor Mark, you know, he really is psychic, he just can't handle it, you know. <laughs> People said the same thing about Randy, because Randy did all this stuff, too. He doesn't like to talk about those years, but he had some years where he used to wear a, a, a long gown and a, sh a, a shroud over his head and walk around like this and do reading, so, you know. So, uh, that's pretty much it. All, all my bottom line is... Uh, when people hear people say there's no way in the world you could have known that, <sighs> not anymore. It really, it really is easy. It's just, it's just if you have, if you can be sincere, like they used to say, if you can be sincere in Hollywood, you got it made. All you have to do is speak from the heart, make make bold statements, and that's it. So that's what we have that's running our country right now. So, so we shouldn't be surprised because we've been asking for it. We've been asking for the paranormal. We've been in a glut of paranormal things for the last 30 years. You know, the X-Files and all that. Big surprise, okay? But now it's time that we have to say, okay, enough is enough. And now I'm really glad that there's Me Too and enough is enough and all this stuff's coming out. So there is some hope. And you guys being here, I mean, meanwhile, across the street, maybe two blocks away, there's like a whole Earth Convention. There's probably 2,000 people there. But the point is, you're not over there. So fight and resist and insist is what I say. I say, you know, you resist by becoming active. If you can sit at home in your pajamas and go on Wikipedia like Susan does, it's very satisfying. If you can learn from this template that we are putting together, go and challenge these people. And one, I'll end with one last thing. You want to make a psychic really mad at his show? Laugh at them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all you, you, don't, you don't stand up and say, you're a fraud, because then the audience will turn on you and they'll rip you apart. But if you laugh, like if he gets something wrong, then you go, ha <laughs> <laughs> it throws them off their mark. It's Especially like if it's a, scattered in the room. You yeah, have several it's just skeptics. Like a magician. If a magician is doing his serious dove production and he hears somebody go, ah! <laughs> <laughs> it throws them off. <laughs> the doves are coming out of the box. So just the next time, if you ever go, try it because there's nothing he can do about it. Because if it sounds genuine, he just he realizes. There's people out there who aren't taking him seriously, and he'll start really going downhill fast. And, and I know because I've tried that. So, any questions? If I can point out what's really funny is you said to laugh at the skeptic, there'd be a, a psychic. psychic, and we all laughed at the psychic. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. It worked. It's good. It does work because, because they're, not, they're the exact opposite of a comedian. A comedian is supposed to generate humor. And, when, and they're talking about dead people, you know? And when they get something wrong, like they say, Grandma had a rose garden, the person says no, and then they hear a ha 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 It's just like fingernails on a black <laughs> We should so, try that with Trump. No. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see the, the Every time he says something wrong, just laugh. Just They'll just right. escort you out. Oh, so but, but again, that, like they, will, they will take right you away and you know. put you in the middle. They did arrest a journalist <laughs> yeah. in the press yeah. conference. Yeah. I mean, that's why I say we have to... Yeah. Start with this. Susan is we have to be very careful with what we say on Wikipedia and what we do, because the truth will eventually out. And he's not fooling anybody anymore. It's just... Uh, it's just a 
a matter of time. <laughs> and and I mean, if, if you go to one of his shows and you start laughing, you're liable to get disappeared. <laughs> so it's not like it was in the '60s, but that's why we start with the low down people. Let's get some. Let's get some successes. We call them, we call yeah. them grief vampires, and if we can throw them off their pedestals, then people might start to say, "Well, this is just a bigger version of that." You see, and that's all it is. It's this shell game. <laughs> It's like they move the shells around and, and keep moving. So, any questions? I'll be happy to answer any. Yes? I actually have to take off pretty quick here. We've got dinner plans. But okay. I wanted to throw something out there. Just a couple of weeks ago, a friend, not a friend, a neighbor on our Facebook page for our, for our city division <coughs> posted that he had some doors that he was replacing and he wanted to get rid of them. I needed a door. So I sent him a text. I said, I want one of your doors. He said, okay, I'll, I'll be at the house until about 8 o'clock tomorrow morning. He gave me his telephone number. The next morning, I sent him a message on Facebook Messenger. He didn't respond. I sent him a regular text thinking maybe he was giving me his phone number because he's not on Facebook Messenger. Mm -hmm. So I, I sent him a, a private text to his cell phone number. He didn't respond. So I went to Dex knows on, uh, on the, the internet, and I just looked him up, and I found his address. And I was like, oh, well, that's like a block and a half over, so I'll just walk over there. Yeah. And when, you know, because it's early in the morning and stuff, you know, so I walk over there, and I'm standing in front of his house. Yeah. And he opens up the garage door, and he was like, that's creepy. <laughs> and I was like, it's, it's called White Pages, man. And he was like, I'm not on the White Pages. And I was yeah. like... I don't know why I would lie to you about that. <laughs> I was just at my house and looked you up on the internet. And he yeah. was like, no, I'm not, on, I'm not on the internet. My wife paid to have us removed from that. So that's one of those places where we also have this consequence that there are people who think they're being diligent but have still slipped through the cracks. Right. Oh, yeah. And people will stay. The same and things will stay there forever. So if you had it at one time, it's yeah. still there. The, the key to really understanding the, the old school psychic mediums and I write about it in my book, is that, that when you're wrong, it makes it more believable. Just like the, like we're talking about um, uh, homeopathy. The more you dilute it, the more <laughs> it is. Because the, the human mind says, well, if I knew it, if you knew his exact address, then that would be some sort of trick or information thing. But if you were like, if you went to the house next door and you said, "Well, I had this feeling you live somewhere around here," oh, then he'd really yeah. be oh, like, no. "Wow!" He'd yeah. be going like this. Right? <laughs> so, so a, a psychic, when they're off just a little bit, like if they do a serial number on a dollar bill, this is what a mentalist does. They'll do a serial number and they'll be off by one number. And guess what? They sit, people's minds say, well, if it was a trick, he would have got it all right. That's what a magician would have done. But no, because a good mentalist doesn't make it look easy. So, and, and that's what I hate about Trump, is he's so stupid. He could be making it look more difficult, and he'd be much more successful. But he just doesn't have a clue. <laughs> It's the clown in the graveyard. <laughs> Surely. Yes. Is it, is it just that that page is kind of earmarked or something so that when she ripped through it? I don't want to be on my secrets. Oh, uh, <laughs> sorry. Okay. 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 No, here's the deal. I reveal my secrets, but you have to take... How and how many of them you have to, You have to take lessons yeah. to learn this thing. And I do not... My whole thing is I don't want to take food off the table from the guy who taught me how to do that. Oh, wait. He's dead now. I don't know. <laughs> he just showed the magazine you missed it. He just showed the magazine you missed it. Oh, missed it. Oh, missed it. Oh, missed it. All right, I do have copies of this if you're interested. I would I'd rather get rid of them than take them back. How much are they? How much are they? Great all this time. And, uh, Pretty soon there's going to be uh, audiobook. Yeah, we'll work on it. Okay, cool. Thank you. That's amazing. Yeah.